There is about 116 universally recognized mathematical symbols and I'm going to explain every one of them. Addition. 1, 2 plus 1, 2 equals 1, 2, 3, 4. Boom. Subtraction. If 2 plus 2 is 4, then 4 minus 2 equals 2. It's addition just backwards. Multiplication. If I have a 3 by 3 grid of cells, then I have 9 cells because 3 times 3 equals 9. Division. If Johnny has 6 apples and 2 friends, how many apples does each friend get? 3, because 6 divided by 2 is 3. But you struggle with division because you have no friends and you can't divide by 0. Plus minus. We didn't know whether to put a plus or a minus here, so we used both. 2 plus minus 1 is 1 or 3. Minus plus. A plus minus B minus plus C equals A plus B minus C. Or A minus B plus C. These signs remain opposites. Equal. If A equals B means A is the same as B, then A not equals B means A is not the same as B. But we can get more specific than that. We can write A is greater than B or A is less than B, and we can even put a little line here to indicate that A is greater than or equal to B. Percent literally just means the exact same thing as divide by 100. So if you're dealing with a difficult percentage problem, then try moving the percentage sign around because it doesn't actually matter where the percent sign goes and you can easily find the answer. Degrees. 360 degrees is one full turn. So one degree is a teeny tiny turn. But you know what's even smaller than one degrees? An arc second, which is one degrees divided by 3,600. Powers. The nth power of A is just A times A times A times A n times. And the nth root of A is the inverse of this, so the nth root of the nth power of A is just A. Again, same thing, just backwards. Pi. Dr. Edward J. Goodwin, an amateur mathematician from Indiana, claimed to have discovered a method for squaring the circle, a famous problem that had already been proven unsolvable in 1882. Despite this, Goodwin was convinced of his own work and sought official recognition for his discoveries. But rather than publishing a mathematical journal like the rest of us, he took a different approach. He tried to make it state law. In 1897, House Bill number 246 was brought to the Indiana General Assembly. The bill effectively claimed to fix the value of pi. The ratio of the diameter and the circumference is as 5 fourths to 4, which implies that pi is 3.2. Amazingly, the Indiana House of Representatives unanimously passed the bill on February 5th, 1897, most likely because they saw it as a way to support Indiana's reputation in education and science. The bill was then sent to Indiana Senate for final approval. By sheer luck, Professor Clarence Waldo was visiting the Indiana legislator on unrelated business, and when he heard about the bill, he was horrified and immediately stepped in. He had to explain to the House that one, the bill is mathematically incorrect, two, it would make Indiana the laughing stock of the world, and three, mathematical constants like pi can't be legislated. Or in other words, just because Indiana says pi is 3.2 doesn't mean pi is 3.2. Eventually, Indiana had to accept the fact that pi was not 3.2. But it makes you think, what if they did it? Delta typically means difference. For example, the gradient of a straight line is the difference between the two y coordinates over the difference between the two x coordinates, or delta y over delta x. Proportional. If y is proportional to x, then y equals kx, where k is a constant. Sometimes you might see a proportional sign flipped to indicate that y is inversely proportional, or y equals k over x. Approximately equal. I actually already use this for my value of pi because no matter how many decimal places you add, you can never actually write down the exact value of pi. It will only ever be approximately equal. Perpendicular. Two lines are perpendicular if they intersect at a right angle. Parallel. Two lines are parallel if they're in the same plane and never intersect no matter how far they extend. Angle. Sometimes measured in degrees but can also be measured in radians where a full turn is 2 pi. Similar. A is similar to B when A is the same shape but different in size. You can also put a line under it to make it similar or equal. Congruent. A is congruent to B if they have the same shape and size. The tut arrow is used for a range of things from vectors to limits to mappings, but it generally always means tut. The line symbol shows an infinite set of points extending in both directions without any endpoints, width or thickness. Therefore, because. The absolute value of a number is the difference between that number and zero on a number line. The floor of a number is the value of that number rounded down to the nearest integer, and the ceiling is the value rounded up to the nearest integer. The factorial of n gives you the number of ways of arranging n elements, so the number of ways of arranging a deck of cards is 52 factorial, or 8 times 10 to the 67. For reference, the number of grains of sands on earth is 7.5 times 10 to the 18. Sigma is typically used to talk about the sum of many terms. The initial index is defined below the sigma and the final index is above and the terms to be summed is on the right of the sigma. Also, sometimes sigma can be used to define the set of letters. 
Product works in the same way as sigma, only we're multiplying instead of adding. Contrary to popular belief, infinity actually isn't the biggest number. Because infinity isn't a number, infinity is a concept that means unboundedness. Aleph null is the smallest infinity, and omega is the biggest. Little d, like delta, represents the change or difference in something. But when we're dealing with curved lines, the only way to find the exact gradient is to make the change in x and the change in y infinitely small. We represent this using little d. Partial is almost the same as little d, but we use little d to find the derivative and partial to find the partial derivative, which calculates the rate of change with respect to one variable while keeping all the other variables constant in a function with multiple variables. Integral calculates the area under a curve by adding together all the thin slices which make up the area. It's an elongated version of the letter S, which stands for sum, and it's also the inverse of differentiation. Set theory. Curly braces define a set as a list of its elements. The most common sets are the natural numbers, the integers, the rational numbers, the real numbers, the complex numbers, and the prime numbers. And you can also say it's raining if and only if there is water coming out of the sky. One is an element of the set one, two, three, because one appears in the set, but four is not an element of the set one, two, three. A union B is all the elements in the set A or B, and A intersect B is all the elements in set A and B. A is a subset of B if all the elements in A are also in set B. You can also put a line under the subset sign to signify that it's subset or equal to. This gun symbol means not, and a backslash means the set difference, which means all the elements in A that's not in B, and it looks like this. This means and, and this means or, this means for all, and this means there exists. Curly P is used to denote the power set, and the power set of A is just the set of all possible subsets of A. So if A is 1, 2, then the power set of A is the empty set, the set of 1, the set of 2, and the set 1, 2. A colon is used to represent such, that, or given, and you can also use a vertical line. So for example, the power set of A is just the set of all S, such that S is a subset or equal to A. The empty set is represented by the Danish O slash symbol, and omega is used in probability theory to represent the set of all possible outcomes. I is equal to the square root of minus 1, so I squared is minus 1, and I to the 4 is minus 1 times minus 1, which is just 1. The dot product of two vectors A and B, where A is 1, 2, minus 3, and B is 4, minus 5, 6, is the sum of the product of the adjacent values. So you just multiply the 1 by the 4, and then the 2 by the minus 5, and the minus 3 by the 6, which gives you 4 minus 10 minus 18, which is minus 24. If A is 1, 2, and B is A, B, then the Cartesian product is the set of ordered pairs 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. So the Cartesian product of A and B is the set of all pairs of elements where the first is in A and the second is in B. If F and G are functions, then F circle G is the composite of the functions F and G. So you find g of x first, then you find f of all of that. The mean represented by mu is the average of a data set, which is found using this formula, or as I like to say, the sum over the count. The standard deviation denoted by sigma is how spread out the data is. So if you find the mean using this formula, then you find the standard deviation using this. Tau is just 2 pi, which some believe makes it easier to work with circles. So instead of finding the circumference using 2 pi r, you just use tau r, or instead of finding the area using pi r squared, you just use tau tau r squared over 2. Okay, maybe not that one, but Terence Tau is pretty cool. The golden ratio is 1 plus root 5 over 2, or 1.618. The Raymond Zeta function equals the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the s, and it's also the product of 1 minus 1 over p to the s inverted for all prime numbers. So this is useful when working with prime numbers. Fold h is the set of all quaternions, and a quaternion is a number q which equals a plus bi plus cj plus dk, where i squared equals j squared equals k squared equals ijk equals minus 1. So ij equals k, jk equals i, and ki equals j. Got it? Fold m is the set of all matrices, and a matrix is just a grid of numbers. More on that later. If a is a square matrix and x is a non-zero vector, then the eigenvalue satisfies this equation. A sequence space is a set of sequences that satisfy specific conditions. For example, if L infinity is the space of all bounded sequences, then sequence x sub n equals minus 1 to the n belongs to L infinity, 
ellipticity because x sub n is bounded between minus 1 and 1. The Weierstrass elliptic is this formula here and it's used in complex analysis, but it's not used in hippopotamus, so honestly it's not worth my time. And that's definitely not because I don't understand it. This funny symbol just means section, for example c section 4.2 for proof, and if z equals a plus bi then the conjugate of z equals a minus bi. Core product is the opposite of the Cartesian product, so if the Cartesian product joins the elements of a and b together, then the core product keeps them disjoint. Nabla is used to denote the gradient of a function as a vector, which points in the direction of steepest increase in that part of the function. So if f equals x plus 2y plus 3z, then nabla f equals 1, 2, 3. If a precedes b, then a is in some way of lower order than b, but it doesn't necessarily mean that a is less than b. For example, we can write the set 1 precedes the set 1, 2 because 1, 2 has more elements, but that doesn't necessarily mean that 1 is less than 1, 2. Instead of saying that pianos, instead of saying that from pianos axioms we can prove 1 plus 1 is 2, we can just say that pianos axioms entails 1 plus 1 is 2. So the statement gamma entails phi means that phi is provable from the set of assumptions gamma. Semantic entailment just means that phi is true in all models where the assumptions gamma hold. Aleph null is the smallest countable in infinity and it's equal to the size of the set of natural numbers. The size of the set of real numbers is 2 to the power of aleph null. Beth null equals aleph null which is the size of the set of natural numbers, beth 1 equals 2 to the power beth null which is the size of the set of real numbers, and beth 2 equals 2 to the power beth 1 which is the size of the power set of the real numbers. So in general beth n plus 1 equals 2 to the beth n. If r is the table with columns employee id, name and department id, and s is the table with columns department ID, department name, then R join S is the table with columns, employee ID, name, department ID, and department name. The department IDs just get joined together into one table. So if A is this 2x2 two two matrix here, then the conjugate of A is the complex conjugate of each of the values in A. And A transposed is what happens when you take the rows of matrix A and turn them into columns. A dagger is what happens when you do both, and it doesn't matter which way around you do them. Double dagger is used as a custom operation, and it can mean anything, and diamond P is possibly P. If V is the vector 1, 2, and W is the vector 3, 4, 5, then to find the tensor product of the two vectors, you lay the first vector along the side and the second along the top, and then multiply the rows by the columns to find the cells in the resulting matrix. If A and B are matrices, then the Hadamard product of A and B is just the element-wise product of each element in the matrix. The symmetric difference of A and B is A subtract B union B subtract A, and it looks like this. The top symbol is used to mean always true, for example P or not P is always true, and the bottom symbol means always false, for example P and not P is always false. The gamma function is this function here, and it helps us to build a continuous function for the factorial of N. The chi symbol is used in Euler's characteristic, which is vertices minus edges plus faces, and it's equal to 2 for all three-dimensional polygons. Kappa stands for curvature and it's found using this equation. The Fourier transform takes a function and breaks it down into the sum of sine and cosine waves of different frequencies. The Laplace transform takes a function of time and converts it into a function of a complex variable, making it easier to solve differential equations. A Hilbert space is like an extended version of 3D space, but it can have infinitely many dimensions and applies to functions, signals, and complex numbers. Here's a meme to explain how it works. Epsilon is used in the definition of limits. Think of it as a very small number which represents how close you want the function's output to get to a certain value. In topology, curly n denotes the neighbourhood of a point p, which is a set containing all points close to p, and curly t represents a topology where a mug equals a donut. Curly m represents a manifold, which is a space that looks like regular Euclidean space locally but can have complex properties globally. In game theory, curly A represents the set of actions, decisions, or strategies available to a player. If A has eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, and so on, then A equals P lambda inverse P, where P is the matrix of eigenvectors, and lambda is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues. In complex analysis, psi denotes the complex potential or special function, such as the digamma function, which is defined as the derivative of the log of the gamma function. Click on this video if you want to see more, and piss off. Finally. Finally, it's over. Yes, yes.